take a quick moment and think about your home. What's it like? What are its star features? What are its major flaws? If I were to ask you to come up with the value of your home right in this moment, do you think you could do it? Let's hold that thought. As a professional real estate advisor for over 20 years, I study homes and prices every single day, and I'll share with you exactly what I share with my sellers. A buyer will determine the value of your home by comparison shopping. They're going to look at the features and benefits of your home and compare them to every single home in their price range. And yes, there are still buyers that will look at every single home in their price range. Ultimately, that buyer will figure out which home was a clear choice and the offer is made and voila, the house is theirs. So let's take a moment and look at the houses that I brought with me today. Now, all things being equal in terms of location, which is a huge factor in determining value, I can say with confidence that all of these homes on the same exact beach will have different value. That one-room shack is going to have less value than the bungalow. And that bungalow is going to have less value than that four-bedroom colonial. And that four-bedroom colonial will definitely have less value than that sprawling mansion. So earlier, I asked you to think about the value of your home. Do you have it? My guess is you probably have a pretty close range of what that is, but when you started thinking about fond family memories and good times with friends, that value started to increase. Or maybe for some of you, it decreased for those exact same memories. So if I had asked you earlier, Think of yourself as a house. What are you like? What are your star features? What are your major flaws? If I had asked you earlier to think about that, I want you to consider being one of these homes. So drawing on my career in pricing real estate, I believe that most sellers tend to overvalue their properties. But drawing on a lifetime career as a woman, I believe we far undervalue ourselves. You see, we all play this comparison game way too often, feeling less than someone else. Maybe you don't feel as intelligent as someone else, or you feel like you've lost your good looks while they haven't. Or maybe it's the material possessions that we have or don't have that weigh most heavily on our value assessment. So which is it for you? Are you the shack, the bungalow, the two-story, or that mansion? You see, if you would have asked me which home I was as a 10-year-old little Greek girl with straight-off-the-boat parents growing up in the 80s and 90s, I definitely would have identified with that one-room shack. Now, my value assessment had nothing to do with any lack of love. I definitely felt love from my family. But what it really meant is that I grew up with this group of European immigrants that were so enamored by the American dream that they placed a huge value on things and appearances. It was as almost as if they were trying to live this high life, even when they couldn't. And the problem for my family was we couldn't really pretend. Now, don't get me wrong. Our basic needs were met. But by the time I was wearing the brand Guess Jeans, it was sort of like, guess how many people wore these before you? <laughs> I remember hating the feeling of wearing somebody else's throwaways. It made me feel less worthy of having something nice and something new. And I told myself at the time that, you know, I wasn't worthy of that. Now, you know, looking at, th this is a fun story. Actually, I imagine my cousin Dimitri's big fat Greek wedding. Forty plus cousins will gather around dozens of aunts and uncles to celebrate the big day. What I remember most about the event is how I felt before and how I felt after. You see, at the event, we were asked to sit in the very back of the room. We were also the last to get to the buffet line. And by the time my brother Dimitri and I got to the dessert table, all that was left 
were three figs and a piece of baklava to share. Once again, I felt like a little shack. It was as if I told myself we were less worthy of getting to the buffet line any sooner than dead last. So it must have been our inferior home, our used clothing, and our lack of money. True or not is just how I felt at the time. Now, moving through my teenage years and all the way through high school, I made it a point to stay in the very back, but this time in the back of the classroom. I always wondered about those strange kids that raced to sit in the front on the first day of school. I mean, who the heck wants to sit in the front row anyway, right? <laughs> Unless you're at a Beyonce concert. So I stayed in the back to stay out of eye contact of my instructors. At the time, I struggled academically and mainly in math. I couldn't grasp ma basic math concepts that seemed so easy for my friends in the front row. I felt like I had to work 10 times harder just to get a C on a test, which was cause for celebration in my family, trust me. But as I gave those kids more value in the front row, I was unknowingly devaluing my own self once again. This is when I told myself that my value was proportional to my intelligence. I was wrong, of course, but I wouldn't know that for another five years or so in my 20s. You see, this is when I had my first shift towards considering raising my personal value. I was 21 years old, completely lost in my direction. I was armed with three whole years of nanny experience, a fluency in Greek, thanks to my mother, and, um, and two years of college. And so I did what thousands and thousands of Americans do each year. I went and got my real estate license. Woohoo! <laughs> I remember my first day like it was yesterday. It was September 2001. My husband Kevin came home with a brand new laptop and a shiny business card case with my name boldly engraved across the top. I was so proud of that moment. I could finally begin a career for myself. I knew I wasn't the smartest person in the world, but I knew I could use my grit and never give up work ethic to figure out how the heck I could succeed. So as my career took off successfully and I, I figured out how to value real estate, my confidence went up and I figured out how to value myself, and that's when the next shift happened. It was as if I was handed the keys to a new me, a better me, no longer that little shack, I would upgrade to the value of the bungalow. Now, it was November 2008. Our market was completely shifting. We were two years into a recession. People were losing their homes. I actually lost half of my income, and I thought about leaving real estate. But by chance, I ran into the top local sales lady in our area, and this woman was a fierce negotiator. She intimidated the hell out of me. But I decided to muster up the courage to ask her what was the secret sauce to her success, because she seemed to be unaffected by the local economy. People knew at the time that this woman was probably going to earn about a million dollars. So it was a very weird moment. I asked her the question, and she looked at me and said, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. And she almost turned to walk away. I said, well, Belene, wait a minute. What do you mean by that? And she said, listen, kid, if you want to be successful in this business, you need to do a few things. Number one, you need to hire a coach. Number two, you need to uh, read more books daily. And number three, you need to work on surrounding yourself by big thinking people. Now, you can imagine the disappointment in my mind. Hire a coach? I had just lost half my income, and I thought only sports players had coaches. Surround myself by big thinking people? What the heck does that mean? I like the people I was around. And read more books daily? Last time I was reading books daily was in college, and I thought those days were behind me. So I took what she said to heart, and I thought about it. And a few months later, I found myself sitting in Vegas in a hotel ballroom in my very favorite seat in the very back of the room. And I remember being scared out of my mind. It was the first time I had boarded a flight by myself to fly across the country. And I was taking pages and pages and pages of notes. And the speaker, oh, he was so inspiring. I connected with him, not because our lives were very similar, but 
He had grown up with two alcoholic parents, very, very poor. He had dropped out of high school, and here he was on stage worth $100 million, and he had 4,000 people hanging on his every word. It was just very inspiring to me. And I remember at one moment, he pointed to the back of the room, and he said, all of you brand new agents back there, I would encourage you to one day have a goal to sit up here in the very front. You see, I coach these agents, and they work daily on their craft. They raise their skill level to be the best they can be, and they sell hundreds of homes per year. They make millions of dollars. Wow. Did you hear him, I thought? Millions of dollars, hundreds of home sales per year. The average agent in the United States sells four to six homes per year. And nobody ever gave this little Greek girl the permission to believe that I could earn a million dollars one day, too. At that moment, I had my next shift. My mind was expanding to places it had never been before. And I remember that moment. I closed my eyes, and I took a long, deep breath. And when I opened my eyes, something was happening. My little legs were moving all the way up the middle of the aisle. And I finally went to the front of the room and took a seat where I never thought I belonged, right there in the very front row. It was such a powerful moment for me. At that moment, I decided to stop thinking about my limiting beliefs. At that moment, I gave myself permission to let go of those beliefs, permission to think bigger for once, and permission to believe that I could live the next bigger life. All these years in my life, I was a little shack surrounded by all these mansions, or so I thought. But maybe, just maybe, the entire time, I was a mansion as well and just didn't know it. So I believe that we can use some of the lessons in my life to figure out how to raise our personal value with these three keys. The first key is to think bigger. You know, my whole life, I had a little drunk monkey on my shoulder that whispered in my ear, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not fast enough. You're not, you're not, you're not. But it's, at some point, we have to just quiet that monkey mind and get rid of it. We're all born with whatever purpose we have inside of us, but we've got to find the vehicle to let that purpose have a voice. The second key for me was um, s- surrounding myself with the right people. So there's a famous quote by Jim Rohn, and he says, we're the average of the five people that we spend the most time with. But I think it's much bigger than that. I think it's the average of all the people in our life that we spend the most time with. So who are your people that you can be vulnerable with that are not going to judge you? Think about your home life and your work life, because you have to surround yourself with people that, that believe in you more than you believe it yourself at times. And the third and final key for me is heavy accountability. So there are numerous studies that show that we're more likely to disappoint ourselves than somebody else. So I hired a coach, and it changed the trajectory of my life. I've had that coach for 10 years, and that person is there for me when I hit a brick wall, and that fear sets in, and they push me right through that and make sure that I get to the other side. My goals were bigger than I could be accountable for. So the next time you're driving down the road, and you see one of those little for sale signs in a yard, I would invite you to pull your car over, not because you care about the price of that home, but more to check in on your dreams, your goals, and your personal values. Are you underpricing yourself? Are you giving yourself everything you deserve? The key is to think about it until something clicks. And when it does, and you truly value you, I promise you, you will come home to yourself. Thank you.